Welcome everybody, thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Michele Finelli and I will give you this uh, gentle introduction to type theory. And uh, this is uh, the uh, outline of the talk. Uh, we we'll get into um, an informal uh, description of what is a type, uh, a very brief history of type theory, and then we get to the main uh, um, topic of the talk, uh, that is uh, uh, why I think that types matters, and uh, uh, what the status of a uh, type system in uh, modern programming languages. So, first of all, it's a talk on uh, type theory, so what is a type? A type is a property. Nothing more, nothing less. A type is something that is assigned to a term. So, a type is something that we use to, um, to tell something else about a program fragment. Uh, it is something that has, or should have, a well-defined meaning. A meaning that will help us in uh, programming, because it tells us some information about this small piece of uh, program code that we have in our uh, larger uh, program. So, uh, uh, I cheated. I told you that a type is a property, and property is something that gives meaning, so obviously the next question is, okay, but what do you mean by meaning, okay? Uh, which of the following is really a really, really a type is being a, a float uh, according to the standard IEEE uh, definition. A, a property, yeah, it probably should be, is the assurance that a given memory location will not be changed by our program fragment. Is the statement that some structure has a certain size, let's say a, a bound on, on an array, just to make things simple. What about this? N is the set of natural numbers, and perm is the, means that this thing that I called pi is a permutation. It is a formula, it's, uh, well, it's not simple, it's not complex, and it depends on how much time do you spend looking at things like this. It expresses a well-defined property in, uh, in, 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 in first order logic. Uh, so, yes, uh, being a floating number is the, definitely a property, and uh, this is probably the uh, uh, standard typic judgment that you have been uh, seeing uh, in, well, any programming language uh, of the last 40 years, except probably assembler, I mean. And uh, is the assurance that a given memory location will not be changed a property? Yes, it's a safety property. That's not so easy to express in a typing, in, in a typing system. And uh, in fact, uh, it's a problem to devise uh, particular concurrent pro programs that have this um, safety condition. Uh, what about uh, a, a statement about uh, a bound, uh, bounds on a, um, on a structure? Uh, it is a type, uh, and it is a type of, uh, um, of a strange kind because uh, um, if you think, as example, of the, of the array, and uh, for example, our bound is just say that the array has 10 elements, this is an example of what is uh, usually called a dependent type because the type of the array uh, is dependent on, uh, on, a, on a value. Uh, the number 10 that uh, uh, in this particular case is just a, a constant that says how uh, big uh, il, uh, our, our structure will, will ever be. Um, what about this? What about this, uh, this formula? Uh, well, that, that again, this, uh, this formula is, uh, uh, is nothing more than the statement that there is an algorithm that sorts the natural numbers. F is... Uh, you have to think to f as a way of encoding an array, and, and it says that uh, uh, if you have uh, uh, an array, a list of numbers, there is a way of 
changing the order in such a way that basically they are uh, ordered by uh, the usual order relations, uh, order relation among numbers. This is a complex signature, so well, it is expected that probably, probably uh, uh, programming languages at the moment do not have the support for this kind of complex type signature. But in principle, all of these examples are just meaningful properties. Some are easier to express and probably to check, but uh, like uh, being an integer, being a double, a float, a complex, uh, etc., uh, helps, but okay, you could ask for something more. And then on this, um, on this list, you get to uh, even more and more uh, complex properties, but properties that will help you in, uh, better in writing uh, robust code. Uh, basically, a type judgment so is, is simply uh, some logical formula. And uh, uh, a logical formula, as you know, is a, a statement in some kind of formal theory that has a property of being either provable or unprovable. And you know that there are cert certain kind of formula which cannot be decided, but we don't get into that stuff today. So uh, being uh, uh, provable is what we usually express by saying that a formula is true. So um, that a program that the program fragment has a given type just means that uh, it is a, a, a piece of code that makes the formula true. Now, we have uh, uh, something uh, strange. Uh, when, we, when we write programs, we don't usually write them just to write the code uh, as it was poetry code is uh, written is meant to be run. You usually execute code because you are interested in what happens when the code runs. But the logical formula is something that is always true or false. Okay? It does not depend on when you are trying to prove the formula or uh, when uh, sometimes it could be true and some other times it could be false. So how we do reconcile this, this seemingly strange thing? We, we give meaning two program fragments by formula, which are always true, but at the same time, the code is something that we run, and so in a sense, change in time. So how do we uh, reconcile this static versus dynamic uh, situation? Um, uh, since uh, uh, the probability of, of a formula uh, is, is, a, is, is a problem, is, is a property that does not depend on, on time, uh, this means that uh, mm, also the meaning of the code should be uh, absolutely determined by its shape, uh, in a sense. And that uh, execution is just uh, um, the, the reduction of the fragment of code to something else, to something simpler, but that basically is equivalent. So we are just writing something complex, which has, which has a, a, a complex shape, a, and then the, there should be a, a machinery in the language such that this fragment, that this piece of code um, uh, gets, technically they say that it gets reduced to something else, which probably is, is a value, is a result, is a result of the computation that you are interested in. But what we have at the beginning and what we have at the end have the same type, have the same time signature. So they are the same thing. You have to think about information that is implicit, that get explicit by uh, executing and running the code. Okay. Uh, if we uh, think about uh, this chain of, uh, of reasoning for a while, uh, um, providing a type in the sense that the type is a logical formula uh, to a, a code fragment means something very powerful. Uh, it means that the code must be pure. It should not have side effect. I assume that all of you attended uh, Bartos Minuski uh, talk a few, few moments ago, and um, so I won't get into the detail of what, what a, a pure function is and what side effects are, but um, since uh, 
uh, our code uh, should always, in a sense, be the same. Uh, uh, even the fact that we have a type of a certain kind always implies that our code should be, should be pure. Uh, moreover, since a formula is something that is completely determined by its shape, obviously, but also on the value that the variable of the formula takes, uh, we have a notion, an implicit notion of, of, of functionality, of, of something that only depends on its inputs uh, and, and, on, and on nothing else. Last uh, but not least, uh, we have, in a certain sense, an informal notion of um, immutability. Uh, there is something that does not change between the code as we write and type checks and the code once it uh, executed and uh, uh, results e e in a value, in something else. There is something that, 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 sta that, that stays the same. All of these properties should sound familiar to you. After all, this conference is called Lambda Con, and uh, I assume that a lot of you are here because they are either use or are interested in functional programming. And uh, what we have been able to, to determine, thinking about types and what types are, in the sense that we think that types are logical formulas, has uh, uh, had some consequences. Uh, we, uh, uh, we got the notion of purity. We got the notion of uh, functional dependency between input and output. And we got the notion of immutable, immutable values. So uh, it should be really uh, easy to understand that uh, we even get to, uh, to, um, to, 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 the, to the notion of functional programming, uh, even starting from a complete uh, different uh, uh, approach. Okay. I, I, never, I never started my talk talking about f functional programming. I just started saying, okay, let's, uh, let's try to, uh, to, to see what does it mean to have something that helps us as programmers and something that helps us in providing a meaningful information to, to the code that we write. What, where, where do we get? We get that types are properties that to be meaningful, they should be logical formula, and that the logical formula has a certain other kind of properties, and on and on and on, we get that probably uh, to have that kind of information attached to a term, to a code fragment, that code fragment sh should be something that basically represents a piece of functional code. Why do we, how do we got uh, there. So, how um, how do we got in uh, a theory uh, theories that uh, uh, try to explain how uh, types uh, are built, how types work, uh, 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 and etc. And um, mm, type theory is a, a branch of well, mathematics, computer science. Uh, uh, mathematical logic, it doesn't matter. And uh, uh, it deals uh, with the interpretation of proposition. Proposition is another way to be, just to skip some detail, of uh, saying logical formula. I will use the two terms uh, as if they were the same. So whenever I say proposition, that's what we already uh, have been talking about uh, for in the last 15 minutes as, as formula. Um, proposition are types, and that was uh, explained in the first part of, of the talk. And uh, there is an analogy on uh, between uh, proofs and programs. So, uh, in a sense, if uh, uh, a program has a certain type, it is it has uh, also a counterpart in the in the in in, in a word. Of, uh, of logic that should be determined. Uh, and the same statement also means that there is a proof for a certain kind of proposition. Uh, the converse is true. And uh, there are uh, 
equivalences between uh, uh, logical theories and type system in such a way that when a formula is true, and this means that it is provable, uh, the same thing, in the sense that we do when we prove the proposition, is uh, the fact that we give uh, a, a type to a program. Um, the analogy is even deeper because uh, execution of, of, of the program is what in logic they call the normalization of the proof, okay? And uh, uh, so uh, it is really not just uh, an interesting uh, analogy, okay? Uh, something that holds but uh, well, perhaps it sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not true. Uh, it's a theorem, okay? A proposition as types, or formulas types, or Curry, Howard, De Bruggine, correspondence, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a notion that was discovered many times during the um, last century by logicians, mathematicians, and computer science alike, is a, a mathematical theorem. It says that uh, a certain kind of logical formulas, nam namely the proposition, and the meaning given to types are the same thing. Uh, the shortest form of, 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 uh, of this theorem is usually called the uh, Curry-Howard isomorphism. Um, Curry uh, stated basically the result in a paper in, uh, in the 40s, but the, the, uh, the, the analogy was not so well understood, and um, Howard, just to, just to uh, make you think about the history of, of, this, uh, of this chain of reasoning, uh, Howard had a, a, a preprint, a paper in 1968 about the last part of the correspondence, namely uh, the correspondence between uh, execution and normalization. But that preprint was uh, actually printed, and so it became it became a paper that ordinary mathematicians were uh, able to read only in 1980 at a um, meeting dedicated to Curry. So it took uh, basically 40 years to uh, to pin down the details. Of this uh, of this correspondence, okay, to to make it uh, 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 to get it to get a theorem from the intuition. It was a long uh, a, a long uh, a long journey. Um, in fact, uh, there is this amazing paper by Philip Wadler that's called "Proposition as Types." Um, Philip Wadler is a computer scientist, a logician that works in, I think, Edinburgh, but I could be mistaken. And he has been working on Haskell type theory, lambda calculus. And this last paper is available on the web, on the web from his home page. And it says, propositional types is a notion with breadth because uh, it applies to a whole range of logics. Uh, Probably when you think about logic, you think to, well, what you learned in school, classical logic, okay, implication and or quantification. But in fact, the formal system are many. There are propositional, predicate logic, first order, second order, intu intuitionistic, etc., etc., etc. And each one of these logical theory correspond to a type system, so the proofs of that logical theory has a counterpart in a certain part of uh, certain, certain subsystems of programming languages. Moreover, the ideas that were born from the analysis of this isomorphism have been able to explain uh, features like, well, obviously functions, but also records, variants, polymorphism, etc., etc., etc. And uh, um, in a sense, it's really amazing because why should a, a formalism that's known as natural deduction, okay, uh, that's basically stuff like that, you know a formula, you draw a line, okay, 
why a, 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 a formalism to, to draw logical formula like that devised by Ganthen in the 30s and uh, the lambda calculus, the simply, the simply typed lambda calculus by Church are the same thing. Uh, why? Uh, the logician Hindley and uh, Robin Milner, who did a lot of amazing stuff from LCF, uh, time system inference, the CSS by calculus, whatever, discovered the same type system. How could it be that Jean Yves Girard, which is a French uh, logician, and Reynolds, who is a computer scientist, independently discovered the same calculus? Because there is something uh, more. A friend of mine says that the problem that we uh, in computer science face, that the gap that we have um, in respect to, well, uh, engineering, physics, is that we do not have the Maxwell equations for what we do. There are no rules that, well, we are discovered by something really smart, but basically when you have Maxwell equation, the Schrodinger equation, uh, the Newtonian laws of motion, or the relativistic counterpart, you have, have everything that you need. Then you try to uh, solve the Schrodinger equation in materials, and you basically get all the uh, uh, advance in electronics in the last 40 years. That's all. It's not easy, but obviously they have tools. Which are the Maxwell equation of computer science. What theory do you use when you write programs? None. Your experience. What you learned, what you tried to do. Okay? Uh, proposition as types is the closest thing that, in my opinion, is, uh, there is to, to this theory. And it got uh, uh, its way in, uh, from, from intuition to theorem when Curry observed that uh, there is something funny. Uh, the type of a function and uh, uh, the, this is the, the sign that they used in the 30s to mean this symbol. Now they are interchangeable because we know that they are basically the same thing. Uh, would be the same. Uh, and, and by the converse, that every probable proposition uh, corresponded to a function. Only in the, 69, uh, in, the, in, the, in the 60s, 70s, that correspondence was made concrete. And, though, and so that natural deduction and CP type of lambda calculus are exactly the same thing. And uh, simplifying a proof, namely this operation, okay, if you give me an implication, if A happens, then there is B, and the hypothesis is true, then also the consequence is true, is exactly what you do when you evaluate a function uh, providing its input and uh, getting, getting um, the output. The correspondence is an isomorphism which is a really powerful and fruitful notion. So, uh, getting back to, to, to the talk, having described how we got to this, um, to this correspondence and uh, having tried to determine what types are, well, you could be skeptical. Okay, it's a nice mathematical uh, correspondence, uh, it's even something powerful that I call isomorphism that, that for some unknown reason makes me happy, but okay, uh, you are, uh, are all the reason to be skeptical and ask if this notion is really relevant to, uh, uh, to the profession of writing, of writing code. And there are uh, results that says that in fact, um, uh, it, is, uh, it, is, it, is, uh, it is true. Uh, having a strong type system helps. This paper was published uh, at the uh, International Conference of, uh, on Software uh, Engineering uh, last year. And uh, quoting from the paper, the presence of a static type system had a significant positive factor on development type. Uh, 
this is uh, how much uh, time was uh, um, how much time was used uh, uh, less by, uh, by by people trying to solve this this, this this kind of exercise. It was an exercise that um, required hours, not months. Otherwise, uh, uh, wasting uh, 15 minutes less would be uh, stupid. And um, there is a certain range, but uh, the effect was overall a positive factor. At Uppsala, um, in 2012, uh, they uh, made another um, test. The result was less, um, um, less certain, in a sense that in three cases on five, uh, they had a, a positive impact of uh, type system. Um, Com mm, with regard to uh, dynamical uh, languages with dynamic types. Uh, we get to dynamic types in a while. And I have also uh, this, uh, 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 mentioned this really nice paper uh, that was published in uh, 2010 at the International Conference of Functional Programming. I don't remember the, the author right now. But he was uh, a guy working for uh, Google at a project called Ganeti, which basically is a system to make a small private cloud tool that took, takes care of uh, instantiating virtual machine, moving them around, host, etc. Quite, quite a complex thing, really, really nice. And it was, it was uh, written in Python, and they uh, wrote some part, or rewrote some part of it in, uh, in Haskell. And uh, I, I, I find this statement really, uh, really interesting. Do we get an advantage of combining two high-level but quite different languages? Yes, sometimes in not obvious ways, but it helps. They discover it really, uh, really uh, uh, hard bugs or potential um, misfeatures of the system because of the help of the type of typing system of Haskell that uh, uh, code written in Python could not leverage. Uh, it's a very interesting paper. So let's say that I have succeeded in convincing you that type system are the most amazing thing that will ever happen to programmers. Why don't we use the only one true type of language? Well, for a good reason, because it does not exist. Before you lynch me, uh, this is a cast. It's, it's a process of trying to get this or these uh, programming languages uh, through uh, progressive um, <laughs> discoveries. Um, I already told you about the fact that the uh, the proof, the complete proof of the carry Howard isomorphism took, uh, let's say, 40 years, okay? And it doesn't care if it was uh, well known by somebody else in, uh, in, 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 in universities in, let's say, 1965, because nobody was using that kind of information. People really realized the power of the carry Howard correspondence <coughs> after 1980s, when all of the papers were published and available to the community. Uh, Bartos, uh, at the end of the talk, uh, showed you what a classic category is and introduced the notion of monad. Uh, monad were defined. Monads in category theory, theory uh, are a concept that is well known and understood since the 60s. But monads as a way of encapsulating states and so encapsulating I.O., et cetera, et cetera, in functional languages was something that was devised, invented by Eugenio Maggi, who is uh, in Genova, and he published that information, that notion in information and computation uh, in 1991. It was not possible to, uh, to write a, a functional programming language with the notion of monad to encapsulate state in the 1990s. Because nobody had that idea. Then he is a logician. He had this wonderful idea. He published 
this paper in that uh, journal, but I think uh, in 1991 I, I was attending my first year at computer science here in Bologna. I, I read the paper five years later. I'm quite sure that when Monji published that paper uh, in 1991, probably one person read that paper in that year. Some researcher, some professor of computer science or, or of mathematics. It, it takes something more to get that as something that you use to program and that you bring it to the industry, okay? So this is a long uh, process. There is a reason why, uh, why we still are not there. Uh, we have the problem of choosing the right logical theory. Uh, terms are uh, programs, uh, correspond to proofs, types correspond to, to formula, to proposition, okay, but proposition in which logical formula, uh, logical theory, sorry. Uh, if the logical theory is undecidable, what does it mean? It means that we do not have a way of deciding if a term type checks or not. Well, we would like to have that kind of information, providing annotation that there's no way of deciding if they are true or false is basically useless. But if you, have, if you have a logical theory that is decidable but that it is too simple, you can only provide stupid information. So you don't use that because they are too simple. They are stuff that you don't use to, to get meaningful information back during the development of software. So that's a real hard part. That's where the, the problem uh, the problem is. Moreover, there is not even an agreement what this is the right amount of pipe typing. We are full of endless this versus that uh, feature, and I'm going to talk about them in the last part of my talk. Thank you, Guy. The first and the most famous is uh, the the the. the um, the, the typed versus the untyped cam. Uh, I'm quoting Lu Luca Cardelli here in, uh, in also that paper, type system is very, very, very well written, very, very nice. And he says, uh, languages that do not restrict the range of variables are, are called untyped languages. They do not have types or, well, you can think that they have just one single universal types and all of the terms belong to that types. Uh, it, it amounts to a logical theory that is basically useless. You assign to everything the same meaning. Okay, fine, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, in this language, this operation may be applied to inappropriate argument. And uh, so, at runtime, we get exceptions, faults, whenever. So, untyped uh, system are really, that's a definition by Robert Harper, really unityped languages because they have just one kind of type. Uh, Lisp is the typical untyped languages. But now, let the flame begin. Is Ruby a, a typed language or JavaScript? And what, what do people say about these languages? They say that uh, they have a type system which allows bad things to happen at runtime by saying that the type system is dynamic. They also invented a new word. I think it was Alex Martelli that devised the term duct type uh, first. Well, it does not make any sense. Okay. Either you are typed and the type system helps you in uh, providing uh, a way of not making mistake, or it's not. That, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. A, a, language, a language can be very useful, uh, even very funny. And uh, you can earn money, even if, if it is not typed. That's not a question. That's not a, a being typed or not is something more. It is not uh, a matter of uh, uh, getting a, a medal. It's just that if you have a typing system, the type system should help you, should help you in avoiding you to make mistake. If the type system sometimes helps you, sometimes not, sometimes who knows, it's not a type system. I don't know why people try to stick that 
uh, term. Um, it's, it's not the fault, not, not being typed, okay? Mm. Lisp was not uh, uh, typed from the very beginning by, by choice of uh, John McCarthy, and it was a fruitful language, okay? Uh, moreover, the real issue is that even statically typed language, languages can fail because the types do not correspond to proposition, to logical formula that encodes safety condition, but to something else. If you have a really strong type system, something that does not break, something that uh, makes you work in a certain way, but the information that's encoded in the type system is not, in a sense, the right one. It's an information that allows you to make mistake. Well, you have a strong type system, but you are still not there. Uh, Cardelli again in type system. In certain statically checked languages, the types do not ensure safety, and it makes a sample of C. C let you do many unsafe and widely used feature, and uh, he um, quote this uh, uh, paper uh, where there are explained the, the ten commandments of a good C uh, programmer, and the first five are directed to compensating the weak checking aspect of C. In fact, he hopes that uh, this paper was written in the early 90s, he hopes that in C++ and Java, the trend uh, will, uh, will improve, okay? Last but not least, uh, you have also this opposition, a split seat type system uh, versus implicit type system. Uh, when you use types, uh, the real burden is also the extra work that you need to specify types, okay? See what happens in Java, which is a mess to me, but okay, I don't program in Java, I can't even stare at Java, it uh, makes my eyes uh, pain. Um, in C++, from C++ 11, 14, whatever, they introduced the auto keyword to just, okay, uh, just basically say, oh, you are a smart compiler, do the type inference for me, please, please <laughs> do the type inference for me. Don't make me write a paper every time. There is a real advantage in using languages with types that are inferred by the compiler because it's work that you do not do, okay? Then the typing relation should be decidable, otherwise you could write complex terms uh, which you know are correct, but where you have to work around the compiler or the interpreter because it, not, it cannot decide without your help that the term, that the program is, uh, uh, is correct. I know for sure that Scala has type system that is uh, uh, Turing complete. And so I think that it would be really hard to write a type checker for that language. So get to the conclusion because I have two minutes. Uh, I hope to have uh, uh, convinced you that uh, if you are here and you are interested in functional programming, well, that's, that's nice, that's a good thing, but please do not miss that opportunity. Uh, do not miss the opportunity to start using uh, functional programming where, with good type system. Uh, and by the way, a uh, really, really good type system cannot be applied to languages which are not functional by nature, uh, because of what we said at the beginning of the talk. Um, uh, type system, whose term language is not a programming language, a uh, functional programming language, also uh, misses an opportunity. And uh, uh, I see uh, functional programming and type system, and when I say type system, I mean strongly type, safe type system, not playing with words, are two, facing, two faces of the same thing. Do not use one without the other. Thank you for your attention, and I think that we have perhaps, uh, thank you.
I think that we have perhaps time for a couple of questions. The next uh, talk is at, uh, okay, 12 o'clock, so. You, the question. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, please, please. Just a moment, otherwise that's okay. I don't think it's on the whole talk. I know, it is for the recording. So, um, Idris is a, I think, new-ish language that has uh, dependent types. And um, that uh, idea was very new to me, and it sort of blew me away when I encountered it. Um, what other sort of new advances are happening in type theory, um, or what other new languages are there to look at, like Idris? Uh, I heard of uh, Idris, like you. I've not been able to have the time to play with it, but um, well, at the moment, on the top of my head, I um, I don't have other other uh, other ideas. I, I think that. Um, sticking to what comes from the uh, Haskell community, from other very fruitful and smart communities, which are basically represented uh, all over this conference, is uh, where you have to look for for new languages, new ideas, new new things to 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 prove. Uh, Haskell, Haskell. It's basically the only language that I slightly know. I'm quite ignorant of a lot of other languages, but th the fact is that when I started trying to understand and use them, my my eyes started to bleed. So I had to stop. Thank you, Thank you too. Other questions? Okay. Thank you again. Have a nice uh, LambdaCon.